Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And right now, I'm going to show you a video that Adam Lerner and I made about two years ago in my old loft on flash photography. Basically, Adam came over one day, and we just we set up a camera and recorded for almost an hour straight of us just shooting with flash photography, just using one flash. Then we added two, then we added three. We used it, used it, it. we used big ass soft boxes. We used scrims, we used reflectors. We just talked about what we were doing and we shot tethered into the computer. Uh, now, being that it was a couple years ago, we shot it with the D7000 in terms of video. For anybody wondering, it was shot with a D7000 with a 16 millimeter fisheye on it. Just one angle, you'll hear us talk about different mentalities. And the thing about it is it's not the most polished video in the world. It's really meant for you guys to just watch what we were doing and listen to what we were saying. Uh, this video hasn't been public before. It's always been unlisted for people uh, on my email list to see it, but this is the first time we're gonna open it up to YouTube and for everybody to see. So being that we don't go into a ton of detail, uh, and some of it may be over your head, if you are looking for flash photography, if you're looking to finally take your flash and know what to do with it, understand the fundamentals of flash photography, the exposure triangle, when to use this, when to use that, and how everything works, why well, I created the Fronos Photo Guide to Flash Photography with Adam Lerner. You can click on the screen at any time during this video to see a preview of that. That thing is awesome. A lot of people have learned a ton from it, and I think if you're looking for flash photography and, and finally how to do it properly and get out of TTL and manually control your flash, this video is going to be for you. So definitely click on the screen and check out that preview that we have there. But for now, we have this hour long video. We pop up the images. They don't stay up there too long, but you can get the point. You'll see it. Just watch us like a fly on the wall, just working, shooting, having fun, and seeing what our results are. And again, it's a couple years ago, so things may look a little different, especially the location and the fact that Adam has a really manly beard going in the video. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Again, if you want to check out the Fronos Photo Beginner Flash Guide, you can do that by clicking the link up on the screen at any point during this video, and it will take you over to that preview. Enjoy, Jared Polin. I don't need to sign off. Do I need to sign off? Just enjoy the video. Jared Polin, Photo.com. I'm here with Mr. Adam Lerner. Adam, what's up? How you doing? Welcome to my, my place. Very nice place you have here. It's quite spacious, I must say. Should we turn the echo down? Yeah, where's the knob for that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're here to do a five minute portrait. Behind me, we have set up the JS Apollo. It's like a 50 inch, really huge soft box. And um, it's a big soft box, but it sets up extremely easy. We've got the Apollo head on side, uh, inside on the stand that just lets us basically slide the, um, the Apollo itself onto it so it attaches and then we can put the pocket wizard with the flash on top of that head. So why, right. why are we using a big ass softbox? Big ass softbox. Well, the whole point in using a big lighting modifier is big modifier, soft light. And soft light means really nice skin tones. It means flattering skin tones. Um, the thing is, is that I try to equate light to water. So like if you imagine yourself with a garden hose and you're outside and you turn the water up to full, the water's gonna come out really in a very, very thick you know, uh, yeah. stream, okay? And if you were to just hold that against the ground, you would instantly start pulling the ground away with it, okay? So that's the example of the power. You put your thumb over that, next thing you know that water is being sprayed everywhere. The same volume of water, but now it's covering a huge amount of distance. The same holds true for light. When you've got a speed light over there, when it's bare like that, it's basically sending a narrow stream of light. So what we're doing right. is we're taking that speed light in that modifier and we're shooting it against this huge, we're shooting it against the interior of this. Which is silver. Silver, and then that in turn is being reflected or pushed out through the white portion here. And because of the shaping of this tool and the diffuser on it, we get this beautiful soft light. And the thing about that is that that silver in there offers somewhat of a specular light, so we've got some nice contrast. So it's not like it's so soft that it's washed out right. either. So we're gonna get nice you know, light in the eyes, we're gonna get nice catch tones. And the reason why we've positioned it over here, even though you're gonna be standing here, which we'll see in a moment, is because I like to shape light when I'm doing portraits. I like to have one side of the face more lit than the other side of the face. It's more flattering that way, it's more thinning that way. Um, and just, it, it, I like it because it's a little bit edgier as sure. well. 
and and when you're using, you know, you've got a big soft box, you you know, your light, you lose light a little bit Absolutely. because it's such a large opening. But when you use a smaller soft box, the thing that people make the mistake about doing is they have it too far away. If you use a mini, like they sell yeah. those mini soft boxes, right. they don't do anything. You've got they to just, be on top of your subject. You literally, that. I mean, we're going to be pretty close to this soft box when we're standing there, but that's to give us the softest light. And another thing to keep in mind is that when you're using small lights like strobes, you don't want to push them. In fact, I would never even push my strobe past like one eighth power because those, those little speed lights, they, they consume a tremendous amount of battery power. They take a lot of recycling time and you don't want to overtax them. The last thing you want to do is overheat them sure. and, 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 and ruin them. So ideally, you know, when you're using a light source like this, particularly when you're using a speed light, it does have to be close to your subject. If we were using studio lights, we'd have more flexibility in that regard. And when you say studio lights, you mean things like the white lightnings, the alien bees, the photo flexes, the Pro photo, Pro photos I mean, and the, the, the Lumadines and, and yeah, all there's of those. a million those. different options out there, you know, for Alien Bees probably being more affordable. Right. And then, you know, Pro photo kind of getting toward the sure. uh, upper edge. Sure. Um, but, you know, the other thing that we've also introduced or we're going to introduce into this while we're doing it is we've got this other SB800 on a Pocket Wizard Flex TT5. I've currently, I'm using the AC3 controller on top of my camera to control all of these. These are in two separate zones. Right now, I've got that one set to be dormant. However, with the AC3 control, I can just turn it on. And the whole purpose of this is that we're going to show a portrait with just this one modifier. Right. And then we're going to take that and we're going to set it a few stops uh, above so that we can wash out the background. And I think in the future, we'll probably do separate discussions on just the flex whole set, the, the whole setup. The whole setup. So we can do that. So you want to get to shooting now? Absolutely. I'm your model? Yes, you are. I'm a model. You're a model. I'm a model. Oh, All right. And one last thing. We're actually, we're shooting tethered to Lightroom. And uh, that's another thing that we're going to have to talk about as well. Um, shooting tethered is a fantastic thing because like Jared and I can talk about about yesterday's photo shoot, I decided to use a 51.4 at 1.4. And you know, that's a very, very difficult lens to keep focus on because the focal move. plane is so shallow. The beautiful thing about shooting tethered is that you know your focus. And uh, you, I don't know, that's about it. Let's get to it. All right, let's move the funky sofa off to the side and get going. Oh my god, it's oh so god. heavy. It's full of rocks. Okay. All right. I'm going to take the long circuitous route around here just to do it. How's it sound, Dad? Sounds good. Awesome. Um, so we've got the uh, Nikon D3S 7200 VR2. We've got the VR turned off. And uh, we're going to try to shoot at 200 millimeters because, it's, again, it's more flattering, more compression, noses, facial features look a lot nicer right now. So instead of using something like uh, a 24 to 70 and trying to shoot at 24 or 70, it's not the best for portraits just because of that. Exactly. It's, it, that's why the 200 F2 in the studio is probably an incredible and an amazing, uh, amazing flash to you. I'm sorry, amazing lens to use because it compresses everything so well. Now, what are your, what are your settings going to be to shoot? I'm just trying to see uh, what I'm going to be doing. I'm 1 250th, F3.2, and ISO 400. So that's where we're going to be starting off right now. Any reason why you don't shoot at 200 ISO in this camera? You know, I absolutely could. Um, I mean, we, we certainly could. We, you know what? We'll, we'll go there. Okay. I'm just asking. We'll, we'll try it. So the, the beautiful thing about shooting tethered is that we get instant results on the camera. So let's do this right here. Okay, there we go. Very nice. Boom. Boom. So let's just see what we got right out of the camera here. So this is one light through the Westcott, and that's really nice. We've got really nice uh, specular uh, highlights over here. You know, we've got the uh, classic Rembrandt lighting, um, really flattering. And, you know, if you notice where Jared's standing, um, how many feet would you say you are from the wall? Three. Three? Um, Maybe five or six. I mean, you've got a big apartment, dude. <laughs> That's about five feet. Okay. Now, ideally, I, I would potentially want to place you maybe even a little bit further, but I like that kind of separation from the background. In terms of framing here, are you going to come tighter? Are you going to just try different things, vertical, horizontal? What are you looking to do? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try a couple of different things over here. All right. But you know, the very first shot is really just to kind of get things going over there. Sure. All right. So here we go. We're going to stay at 200. And okay, I'll come in a little tighter. Here we go. All right, there, yeah, smoldering, smoldering. There we go, very nice. You want blue steel or magnum? Yeah, blue steel or magnum. Oh, that's fantastic. Hang on. I'm grabbing focus from your eye. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm looking to go. 
And uh, I'm just looking at these, these puppies coming in here and I'm really liking what I'm seeing. And this is really slow with USB. That's just the nature of the beast. Absolutely. Um, now the other thing that's also nice about this kind of separation that we have from you in the background is that we get a little bit of you know, a, a, a ring, like a haloing effect. You know, it'd be cool if we did hook the projector up yeah. somewhere. We'll have to do that another time for sure. All right. Nice. Hold that. Blue steel. Blue steel. Oh, yeah. Stay right where you are. It's going to go back over here. Let me get low. Very nice. That's great. Give me your hands. What do you want? Your hands. That's nice. Dro uh, drop them just a touch. Do something a little bit more shaping like with them. Yes. Yeah, but you uh, split the difference. There you go. Great. All right, so that's really cool. That, that offers a really kind of a, a nice effect and I'm really loving the, the, so, the look that, that you've got over here. So this is pretty simple. What I mean, we've got the Rembrandt light popped in there because that's the triangle off the side but of the we've face. We've got a nice catch light on your other eye. And we do. We have two. Ca we have the nice catch light there, and, we, and you can see that the window, you know, the, the room light's not affecting this. No. Um, I mean, this is a simple light setup, and it took us five minutes to get this going. Right. Now, what I want to try to introduce to this scenario right here is, oftentimes, um, if you're doing an editorial shot, you don't want to have any information in the background. Also, oftentimes the, uh, you know, the, the model will be siloed away from the background and you don't want to have to do a lot of posts. So if you shoot against a white background, you, know, you can eliminate that. And one of the things you can do is you can set up, you know, uh, what we've got here is another SB800. It's about maybe, what, three feet off the ground and maybe a foot and a half or two yeah. from the wall over there. And I've zoomed that out to 24 millimeters, and the whole purpose of that is to do a wide spread of light. Same idea as we talked about before. So I'm just going to go up onto my AC controller here. That's in zone B. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to just set it, let's say, a few stops um, above where I'm shooting right now. And the idea being is that that's going to wash out the background. All right, here we go. Very nice, blue steel. Let's check that out. So. You know, I mean, what, I mean, it's more trial and error still, correct? Yeah. I mean, you get the feeling that look at that instant, instant result. My hair's messed up. <laughs> I mean, because there's more light on this side of my head, but that's good. That blue steel looks awesome. I'd come in uber duper tighter. Let's do that. 200. Let's, crank let's, it to 200. We're going to, we're going to well, crank. Well, zoom in to 200, but then. I'm, I'm, I'm going to actually change my ISO to 200. And the thing that's neat about the pocket wizards is that the, your ISO and your aperture changes will affect um, your results instantly. Why? Because it basically communic it communicates those changes to the pocket wizard All to right. change the power settings. And if we didn't have pocket wizards and somebody was just uh, syncing, plugging right in, they could do the same thing. Uh, if they didn't have pocket wizards, they'd have to trigger the flash one way or another. And then you would just manually set your power accordingly and you would basically set that, you know, four stops or so above what you've got this to wash out your background. Sure. Sure. So let's try this out. Um, I've changed the ISO to 200 over here. I'm going to come in a little bit tighter and we're going to get some more of that nice chunky blue steel. Fantastic. Now let's just go and see what we got. I like the tethered because you get to see the results and you get to look you right at it. You can see it. That's pretty fierce. All right. So it's a little so under. The, yeah, but you know what's really nice the about that? Great. The background is great. So all we got to do here is we're going to go into zone C and we're just going to pump it up and I'm just going to go up one, one, one. Well, why wouldn't you just change it from your settings in the camera? Because I like the settings that I have in the camera and what are, what are your settings currently? I'm at one two fiftieth at F two eight and ISO two hundred. So you're shooting at two eight for what reason? Because I really want a very limited focal plane. And you're locking in on my eye. And I'm locking in on your eye. Single focus. Single with focus the point with the beep. Because as good as I think I can focus, that's almost there. Um, I'm just going to bring it up one more. So you're, what you're changing right now is the Apollo, the one that's in the Apollo? I'm changing the one in the Apollo. Brighter. Brighter. Because I like the background to me is fine. It could be a little bit brighter and I might actually just go a little bit brighter on the So background. you're going to go a tink up on both? Tink up on both. It's good. Yeah, we need a little bit more kicked in. A little bit more kick in on the face. Drop the hand just a touch. A little more. Hold that. Great. Let's take a look. Really nice catch lights here. 
That's good. That is really Look good. Look at the, the, the Rembrandt, the nice triangle there, nice highlights in the eye. Yep. Can we zoom in? Absolutely. Just uh, jump on in there. Yep, look at look at the eyes. It's sharp. Super sharp. One sharp, the other is no, it's no, they're pretty sharp. I mean, they're you know, from this distance you're pretty much on the right. same focal plane. Now, the one thing is is that the, the one thing about this particular lighting modifier is that you get a big square um, catch light in the eye. Right. Not my favorite. I'm more a fan of using like an umbrella or something more circular because the eye is circular. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do love the way that the light is coming off of this. All right, um, let's keep going. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's just shoot a bunch. Let's yeah. just shoot a bunch and see how they do come you wanna, up. You want to? Maybe you, at some point you want me to give you the camera and do the same. Let's go. All right. We'll see how I would shoot you this hate bad shooting. boy. You hate shooting. Now, just remember, okay, right now, if you want to change the power on the flashes, okay, um, you've got zone B. Yeah. Is that little guy over there? That's that's our background. And C is in the Westcott. Yeah, I've, I've yet to use these pocket wizards. I own them, I haven't used them yet. Right, and if you want to turn it off, you can just slide it over to Turn the off other. what? The, if you want to turn off that flash, you just slide this. All right, and turning these dials do what? Change the power. If you want more power, you go oh, to the left, I mean to the right if you want. Yeah, to. all right, let's shoot. I just want to shoot. Here we go. Foot right on the, um, there you go. Uh, we're back to my style, right uh -oh. there. Right there. I'd probably put on VR, by the way. Do it. Why am I looking at the back of the camera? Because that's the, the, which, what you're meant to I'm do. I'm going to turn you into the light just a little more. That's nice. Now, that, bring that back foot towards me a little bit. Turn your body this way. That's it. Now I just want your head, turn it towards the light. There you go. Now bring just your nose towards me. <laughs> I want to see what this looks like. You don't want to lose an eye, do you? Boom. I'm just watching. I mean, I shot that tight, so wait till you see the, compo the composition. Now, we should in. also tell people that we're not professional models. So we have some spillover light coming there. That's really nice. But see, what I was focused on here when I was composing in the camera was that I didn't want to cut off this arm and I didn't want to cut off any of your back. So that's why I had to get that really close to do that. Right. Um, I want to kill the background light. Okay, great. So killing the background light, um, we just go in here and... Uh, you said that's B? That would be B, and we just turn it off right there. And you can always test it with the tester over here. Yep. It's off. And so if I want to change the power to the, the main light, the that's C, light. C, I just... Up or down. All right, so that's a half down. So up, uh, zero down. I get it. Zero, and then the higher it goes, it's better. Correct. So I just want to play with this because I haven't done really this before. That's good, add right there, hold it. We're gonna get this locked in. Usually I'd be shooting quicker, I'd get it locked in. Right. And you'd get it locked in, we're just, uh, so it needs a little bit more. It's nice. Nice. We can definitely bring it back. So yeah, I'm at one, stop. I'm at one right now, so what do I put it to, a half? Well, uh, you just go up one notch, I don't know what the next increment is. Well, here's one. Right. Is that the way I go? You're going the wrong way. There you go. But that says like zero. I would go in one in increments, just third increments over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll figure this you out. You probably dialed it down a little bit. Rest the hand, like barely touch your hand. No, I liked what you had with the fingers, but yeah, right there. Hold it. We're gonna take a couple. Boom. I'm actually gonna put VR on because I'm moving a little bit. Okay. Boom. Or I could do like what the models do. <laughs> what, is that what they do? Look at that, Ad. Yeah, they'll do something like this. They'll be like. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Give me the serious right here. I'm coming in close. Okay. Oh, because I like tight portraits. I liked what you did with the hands. It added interest. There you go. Hold it. And I'm just making sure I got everything info, everything compositionally here. Boom. Nice. I like that. I'm in with the 200 doing that. I probably. Yeah, and you got a little catch light in that one eye. A little bit. That's very cool. Now, if we wanted to kick more light in there, um, 
well, we would need to put another light or a reflector over there. To where? Or oh, the synthetic let's ice. let's do that. Okay, here. I'm going to do something. Do I have that? Do you have your um, it's five in one? It's in the car. Darn. You want me to go get it? Let's go get it. Let's take a break and then go and get it. Right, because that would also be something really cool to show people is that I'm going to have you just hold it like this. And or I'll have you hold it, because I like shooting. Well, this is my, this is my shoot. All right, so we're going to arm wrestle. Let, let's go get that thing. All right. All right, so we now have our lighting tool. And uh, this is actually an amazing tool. In fact, Alan's got a ton of these in stock, different sizes. And this is a five in one. So what that means is you've got white on this side. You've got gold on this side. Well, we don't like the gold. No, we don't like gold is like 1990s done all over again. If you, you don't if want you it. If you open it up, you can reverse the outer layer and you can go silver yep. or black if you want to actually duck the light. And on the inside here, you've got a diffuser. So if you're shooting on a very, very sunny day. You have the assistant hold it up. Yep, exactly. And what's really a beautiful light on a, on a what really gets you beautiful light on a sunny day is you have assistant hold the diffuser up on the model, and then you have somebody else hold a reflector underneath the model, and then you've got an absolutely gorgeous portable lighting studio. Or if you don't even if you don't have anybody to help you, you've got an extra stand and, a, and an A clamp, and you just clamp them there. Absolutely. Clamps are clamps are cheap. You go to you go to uh, Home Depot and all those places, and they've got really inexpensive. They don't have to be special. Right. They're just straight up the orange A clamps or the green ones. And what our good friend Richie Myers has shown, and what we'll always advocate, is that you know improvising in the field. Oftentimes, if you don't have a sandbag and it gets windy, you just take your camera bag and you just you know hook it to your stand, and there you go. You don't have to worry about your gear flying down or hurting the model. Rich, Richie's got a lot of that stuff. So what are we going to do here? Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go back. We're going to do the same portrait, and then I'm going to have you hold this like this. Okay. So I'm going to fold it up, get the light to bounce around to yeah. fill in the other side. Exactly. Oh, I could do one where I also hold it over here too, so we get the difference. True, but what I want to do is I want to try to fill in this area a little bit. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right, so let's do one without. Get right in there. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, Zoolander. <laughs> You're pursing your lips. That's the blue steel. There you go. All right, what do we got? That's nice. I mean, it's a little funny, but it's nice. That's hot. It is. No, well, you know what? Let's just, for the sake of demonstration purposes, yeah. let's use that gold side. Okay. <laughs> Hold it a little bit higher and angle it a little bit down. Like, like this? Toward me. A little bit higher. Yep, a little higher. Less angle. Less angle. More like this. Wait, where were you? Yeah, let's try that out. All right, here we go. Actually, I got to come in a little bit tighter. Come on, you. There we go. You know what I also like about the beep, and I'm just going to say this, as the model, I don't know when you're shooting, but right. when I hear that beep, I know I need to just relax and you know, not blink. You know, it's, it's not bad with the... Uh, no, it's not that bad at all. Do you see a difference? I do. It's just, it's just smoother. Look at that. Let's try the white side as well. Now again, if you're not getting like a dramatically improved result and it, it you know, this is semi-awkward, then just lose the tool. You know? Who, me? Am I the tool? <laughs> you don't want me to answer that. Great. Yeah, I've never thought about that, about the beep before. No, and I but agree with you. But that's something you can just tell a model. Look, the beep is here for both of us. One, it lets me know you're in focus. That looks great, Jared. And two, it lets, it lets you know we're getting ready to, to shoot. The framing's a little off, but. Well, it's not, you know what's great about this? The, the 2.8 that you're shooting at, it, it, the hair, are, they're wisps. Can we just do one more of these and I want to bring that background light in Sure. Okay. All right, there we go. That's interesting, the AC3 thing, is in, that's unbelievable, here. just to be able to change everything I from there. I just tested it, and that's also a good thing. If you're going to introduce new lights into the equation, Test them, you know, before you use them. Make sure everything's talking to everything and, and, and working. That's like, you know, if you're shooting studio lights and you change the power, you, you want need to, to cycle dump it. it. You dump it. Yeah. Yep, because it could still have too much in there. All right, here we go. I don't know why we're not focus beeping. Oh, come on, you. There we go. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, in the old days, it used this. to matter more. It's, now it's digital. If you, if you mess up a picture, you mess up a picture. It's not right. film where it's like, oh, it didn't fire. That's just, that's fantastic. So A, B that, go back one. Wow. So we went from a gradated background. Literally, we have, a, we have an off-white wall here. It's eggshell right. color. And we went from um, a basic, we had a, basically a gradient. And the further away from the wall I get, the right. darker the background. You, you, you want to just improvise? I'd like you to come a little Let's, bit further and forward. And we'll move the light. I'm going to move the light Let's over go here. Let's go like literally right up to this. This is another. 10 feet. No, I'm moving to the crack. That's, That's too close. Five feet, eight inches. Okay, you're gonna move to the crack? Yeah, five feet, eight inches. All right. So, so you get in position. I don't think you need to be that far away. <laughs> five feet, six inches. <laughs> All right. Let's Do you see. want me to turn the, is there any like special way you have it? It doesn't matter if it's pointed directly at me. I don't really want it directly at you. You I'm just gonna, want to spill a little bit? I'm just gonna dump it over that way. All right, I'm not gonna, I'll just leave this down here. All right. Yeah, you, you can even lose that if you want. You want to give it to me? No. You want to toss it? Well, that's not a good idea. That wouldn't have been too good. No. All right, I'm going to turn off my, my backlight for the first of these shots right here. You ready? Watch this. Hang on. Mm, nice. That, that felt so it felt not so good. good. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, looks fantastic. oh, oh, oh. The, the separation is just... That is a professional portrait. That is a professional portrait. <laughs> that is easy. High five. That, very nice. That, now get, get back there and let's do the same thing with the, uh, with the background. How easy was that? And what we're going to do with the background, now that we've got more separation, which is my preferred, is that I like to have these lights about three feet from the wall. What if you put it straight in the back? I'm going to keep it like that for now. Just wondering. I'm but just, we can I want to see what around. happens. We're going to move it around. I just don't want it to be in the shot either. Look at that, that's like really a good picture. <laughs> what are you saying about me? It's all in the model. <laughs> Let's see how we go. Wow. So we went from gradated background to very, I mean that's messy hair, but. But, but that's also what the, the light's doing. But it's amazing how the background is just completely blown out. I mean, that's such a, like, you, you could literally take this on assignment with you anywhere. Well, this is what I do. I mean, I bring, I bring. Do you use a box this big? No. And, and because what I do in lieu of this is I just do a small shoot through umbrella when I'm on assignment. Okay, and that's a softer. Yep. Well, it's not softer, it's just another way to do it. Another way to soften it's the light. It's not going to bounce around as much because it doesn't have the reflective nature. So this is really, if you're working in the studio, um, situa that, I can't get past that first picture, that, that picture before. I, I mean, the light in the back, the, gr the way the it's background. Like, I think it's one of my favorites. I, I'd like you to maybe uh, take one of me while we're at it. All right. Kill the, um, I killed it. Killed it. Here we go. Got it. Right. It's always good to say got it when got you it. pick up somebody's camera. You want to make sure there's that connection that somebody tells you they have. I think you and I are very conscientious because we know this camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you need to take one step that way. Turn your feet, bring that foot forward. Right. That's it. Look into the light and then rotate your shoulders back to me. Yeah, right there. I do that multiple beep thing. I like to make me sure too. I'm officially locked in. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I don't like the expression. That is one weird expression. Let's get that again with a better expression. And I probably need to turn your face more into the light so that we get that, um, if you need to be a little closer, the crack on the floor is your thing, so okay. one little step back. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be square to me. Okay. So just bring your eyes to me because what happens here is now the light's going to fill in this side of the face instead of being a split. Instead right. of being straight split lighting, we're going to get some spill over there. Hold that. Boom. Um, turn a little bit more into the light. That's it. Now bring your head to me. Oh, I was going to ask you to do this tilt, but that could be bad. Back straight up. A little straighter. There you go. Boom. Now, well, while we nice have Rembrandt. this. That's not bad. 
See, we got the nice Rembrandt and the nice spill over there. That's terrific. And the background looks great. And it's completely blown out. Fill, filled the frame very well, left room if we needed to do something right. with it. Now, why don't we just show the readers what happens if we put the light directly adjacent? Yeah, let's see what happens. And I can, I'll, I'll strike the same thing. Why don't position. you look right into the light? S straight profile. I don't know about that one. <laughs> why is that? <laughs> it's my heritage, man. Oh, what are you trying to say? You've got the nose? <laughs> I've got the, the nose. The nose. schnoz? The schnoz. I like that. That's pretty cool. I want to, now, I want to, I want to, um, so you're saying instead, yeah, I like my settings. I want to make it darker. Um, so. Just go down a third. Well, that way? Yep. To zero? Yep. Because the other way is brighter? Yep. I need to figure that out. I know. I mean, we, we, we can go over that another time. Yeah, we need to sit Same down thing. and do that. Yeah, I like that. Sunrise, sunset. I just love the color in the background know, that, that we're getting. The, the, it's a beautiful gradation. No, it's the other oh, way. You went the other way, sorry. It made sense. So we were at that. I'm going to go to a full stop. Okay. I want it to be more. Uh, and I'm at 200 millimeters here. Perfect. Boom. That's the thing about that VR2 is that it focuses very close. Oh, the, and, and it locks in tight. All right, while we got this. Ooh, that's nice. Let's get something more straight on. Something that but look I at the eyes on that and look at your beard. That is nice. Yeah. That's a nice portrait. Let's do something a little bit you more. You want to do straight? Do you want to turn it all? Just a little bit. Okay, use your feet to turn. You know what? I'm going to stick with the horizontal. Boom. And I, I mean, what I'm looking for compositionally but in the camera. look what the background's doing. The background's nice. That's a, that's a very nice portrait. Let's do one of you. Look at that. That's, look how tight, look. And, but look what we've done to that background. So the background has, um, there's a little bit of spill going back there. Yep. Let's do the same thing. We'll do the profile. Look, look the only at, thing I would do differently on this is I would, have the model lose the hood unless we were shooting a hood because sure. it looks like I got a humpback. So we're showing my butt to the camera right now? Well, we had my butt, which was pretty much what, what my wife calls gone-ass. Gone-ass? Right, because <laughs> it's gone. Here we go. I don't know why I'm not getting a... Here we go. Take gone, baby, gone, baby, gone. Oi. 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 I want to get in a little bit tighter on that one, and then we'll do the other side. Yeah, less hair, more, less hair, more, 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 profile. more fill in the face. Yep. Hold on. And we were not at 200. What wasn't at 200? The uh, lens. Well, the, I was in off. mine. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, just literally do forehead to right below the chin. That's what I did with you. Oh, yeah? Are you directing me to direct you? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm going to do it the way I do it. Here we go. All right. That, I gave you blue steel. You did. Boom. Wow. This is nice light. Let's do straight on. Look at that. I mean, and look, the eye is sharp as yeah. can be, and then the eyebrows start to fall out from there. It's almost like I don't have a fro. <laughs> so we'll do straight on. This is really fun and simple. Exactly. I need to start bringing models into, my, into the fro factory and just start. Fro factory? I need to start pumping them out, pumping the pink. Hold that. Taking a quick look. I mean, this is, if we talk about beginners out there. Okay. Like a beginner could get a simple light setup. That's like one of my favorite shots of you. That is nice. That's beautiful. Sharp, you, you were on the, focusing on the eye with the light, correct? I was actually focusing on the eye without the light. I should focus so on the light So you should focus eye. on the light. Let's do that again then. So take that, guys. We know that my eye isn't gonna be, the one that's in the shadow isn't gonna really show up. So we wanna focus in on the other one that's in the light. That way, it's just, it's just sharp, the one that you want. I mean, I think this was sharp, but I think it's... Yeah, uh, we want to just make sure. See, that's nice. Not as good of a, an expression. Well, I, I toned the expression down on I, that I one. like the expression you had before, though. Let me see what it looks like. And yeah, okay, I see it. And this is another thing that you can tell people. And I, I saw, uh, I'll say it, Peter Hurley was doing stuff like this, right. where he would do five, six, seven shots and say, model, come over here. And let me, you know, let's see it. Absolutely. Because you have to, you can't just show them on the back of the screen anymore. No. And this is what's going to happen with the D4, when the D4 
hits, and you've got that AC5. Right. AC5. It's a, it's <laughs> it's a, a WT5. Um, WT5. You can shoot to, I should probably get, um, well. You, you find start, that when you say WT5 that there's, you almost slip with something else? No. Okay. No. We should start rolling my 27 inch iMac around. Yeah. Um, and that, I'll shoot tethered to that or have the projector. Shoot probably, tethered to the projector. Probably not the projector because it's not a good thing. I don't think anybody wants to see themselves that big. No, but you know, that, basically me seeing my expression right. and being able, even this is a 13 inch laptop, it's still awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, so more to, to oh, me. I was like this. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's the right eye to get. Great. And I can feel that I was doing the smiley thing and making it work better. It's, that's nice. It's nice. It's, it's, I think the first one was my favorite. Go one more dark. Let's get this side of the face totally gone. Yeah, you're right. So take it back to what we're at one now. So you want to go back to almost zero, right? I'm going to go two thirds of a stop. I mean, I love, you know, once you get the lighting set up, it's just a matter of playing with the tools, moving, um, and just trying different things. Ooh, that is dreamy. That is dreamy. That is awesome. Look at, and this, is, this is why you should do eight. And I guess this is why that um, the Here, Pocket do, Wizards. Do you want to do it like that to me, and then I have another idea. And this is why Maybe the Pocket like Wizards, these are, these are really good. Should yeah. I get up, you want me to get taller? Um, you can step on that little stool, right? Mm, I made this stool. In seventh grade. Don't step on that stool. Let me go get my, um, you talk to the camera. I'm going to go get my step stool that I carry because I'm short. Okay. Um, so what, what Jared is doing is that <laughs> uh, oftentimes when you're shooting somebody who's taller than you, there's nothing wrong with having a step stool or something to step on because then you can be at their sight level or even a little bit above, which believe it or not is a very flattering look. I, and most portrait photographers, we carry these things around. I've got varying different sizes of these. Make sure whatever you carry around is, is going to support your weight that's going to be sturdy. Yeah, I, <laughs> I carry this around because I like to have a higher... Um, See, right, right away now, we're more connected on this shot. Yeah. I need you to turn your face into the light. Uh, no, no, wait, wait, we didn't want to turn our face into the light. There you go. Right, right there, Ed. Let me do another. Great. This is too high. This is the right level. Well, let's look at it while we got it. I don't want to be any higher than that. You want me to fill that frame a little more? Yeah. Uh, well, just set me off to the side a little bit more so that, so that this falls off into the side. All right, let me, I want to see what you did before. Sure. Just so I get a feel for it. Okay. All right, I see it. God, why do I look so tired? Because I was only at 140 <laughs> on that. Can you make me look less tired? Yeah, don't stay out late at the bar. Yeah. Whose fault is that? Um, yours? Try not to smile and can't not smile. Hold it. Ah, I didn't mean to hit the button. I hate that. Great. I still didn't fill it as much. I have a problem filling that frame totally. Yeah, let's back it off a little bit. You want me to fill the frame more? No. I don't know, it's, it just seems to be like hard for me to shoot that way. I don't know why. How did we get, well, I really like what we had over here, the separation. You were turned the neck, into the light more. With the neck. Let me, let me do it one more. You got really close. Turn into the light more, bring that foot towards me, turn your face, now bring your nose towards me more, a little bit more. Oh, I want to focus on the back eye because that's the one. Let's do one more. I think the VR helps me in this because I can feel it shaking. I mean, when you're out at 200. Well, that's too close. I don't like the chin cut off. You don't? No. You cut uh, mine I was off, first, right? No, what I liked was the separation of the chin on, with the light on the neck. See that? Mm. That's what I was trying okay. to, to get for. This is, we all have our, uh, yeah. we all have our visions. Right. I, I keep looking at this and thinking when I should shave off my beard. So now I have to make sure that I get the beard cut. That's not bad. It's interesting. Okay, I have a nice idea here. Now, oftentimes, when you want to bounce a little bit of fill onto a subject, you can basically use a lighting modifier on the floor. On the floor and you can take a speed light and you can direct it directly to the floor. 
Okay, so what we have here is we've taken that light from the back, which we don't really seem to be using because we're just loving the gradient that we're getting um, right now. And we're going to use this to pop a little bit of fill into Jared's face. So we've got, <laughs> <laughs> we've got the SB900 here, uh, 800, sorry. And we're, we just have a, a bounce card, you know, and this, this could be um, uh, a piece of uh, foam core. Foam core, it could be white paper. Drywall. Pillowcase. You know, it do, you don't actually need to have, you know, a specific tool to do the job. Well, that, and that's the thing. It's the D, DIY stuff that you don't have to go and spend money on everything. If you've got even like an old door or just you paint something white, you spray paint something white. You get a, you, you know what? That construction board. Yeah. So really, you've got another uh, pocket wizard here. Another pocket wizard here. And it's the same, it's the same light that we had from the back. So we haven't tested this, so we don't know what it's going to look no, like. No, I took it down a few stops just because I didn't want to blow things out. Oh, wow. Totally different kind of a light. It we is. We still have the really nice modified light from... Look how soft it is on the, underneath the neck now. Exactly. So if you built and, the, and turned this into a three-light setup, if we had... We've got this one as the, the main. Guess what? What? We have a third light. Where? Over there. I'm going to bring it in. In the background. Yes. No, I'm going to bring it in. It's just that, that's, that's in the next segment. Oh, yeah. OK. I mean, that's interesting, because it needs a little bit more kick but in look the at, face, look right? At, look at the, look at the uh, it maybe doesn't need, but let's. This, this, is the, this is the kind of shot that I would do with a man. I would do this with oh, some, yeah? Yes, with a man. With a man? Yes. <laughs> a very, very, very subtle man. With, with lots of flowing locks of hair. No, the idea about this is that this is a much harsher look. This is the, we've got really specular highlights over here. It's more contrasty. You, it's a more aggressive look. And it doesn't even have to do with your expression. Um, but it, it's very moody. It's very edgy. And um, this kind of look, I think, works well on dudes. Um, I think yeah. the ladies would probably not be into this. I think kicking a, just a little, little light in the face. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. But for the time being, I want to stick with what we have right here, just do a few more shots, and then... Uh, do you know what I also did before you took the picture? What's that? I tilted my head down so that the light oh, bouncing up... but you don't necessarily even need to do that. Right. Now, what you can also do, if you are having a problem with that, is you can uh, lift the modifier up. But what, you, what you, I've I done I could use my feet for that. ...is that I have taken the... Um, I've taken the, uh, the head on this, and I put it at an angle. So if you want to theoretically think the light's going to bounce down and go back up at you. Now, another thing that I could do here is that I can, right now I was zoomed out to 24. I'm going to zoom to 105 to give it an even more dramatic look. So by zooming the head out, it's going to narrow the beam of light. Absolutely. So it'll be more dramatic, it'll be more edgy, and more masculine. And being that it's one of these type of shots, I did like to bring my chin down and my eyes come up sure. that way. Now, look what we have here. Yes, and, and look at the catch light coming off the ground. Absolutely. So we have now two catch lights in there. We've got the square one and we have a round one underneath. Um, just the, the round one is the only one kicking in and over on but the But we still other have side. really nice separation of your, your, your chin from your neck. That's really good. Really good. So step in a little bit more. You want me to straddle the light? Straddle the light. All right, don't feel compelled to, 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 to look down this time. Yeah, that's fine. Keep your head tilted up to me. I like that. I'm just going to step back, do another one from here. OK, here we go. Nice. Let's just take a quick look. I really like that. I've never been a fan of the smug chin up, personally. No. But I like the second one this better. Is, I this dropped is really it. really nice. Oop, I just touched the light. Now let's, do you want to bring the third one in, or do you want pictures of you? Let's just do that. Let's just keep just, just taking turns with this, because you might find things that are cool to do with it as well. Uh, this looks like it dropped off of your um, thing. Yeah. And again, here we have two SB800s. Two lighting modifiers. We got the, what is that, the Apollo JS Westcott. Apollo JS Westcott 50. And we're using two of their, what, what do we call those heads? Um, Run over to the desk real quick and see what that thing was. This is the new adjustable Westcott shoe mount clamp. Yeah, the shoe mount clamp. Alan's got a bunch of those bad boys in stock. It's the shoe uh, flat clamp. Well, yeah, it, it's rotatable. It's easy. It's good. We like it. Whatever. There we go, Ad.
Yeah, when I'm shooting out at 200, it's just like I can feel the subtle movements. I know. Now, check this out. See what happens if I duck down over here. Well, now we're going to lose all the light. We're still going to have light, though. Look at how this is going to wash down. We still have plenty of wash. We're going to have a stronger down below. <laughs> <laughs> a stronger down below. I don't even know what this means. I don't know what you mean, stronger down below. But look at that. Fierce. I mean, it's not flat. <laughs> no, but that's really badass. Right. Not bad. That's really cool. Now, me, let's I want to shoot tighter. Let's just do one other thing. Let's turn off the West, the, uh, Westcott. So what number was that? Okay, so that's, that's um, C. So that just goes sliding all the way to the side there. And now we're just going to use this over here. Just to see the and difference. And why don't you take a low angle and I'll direct you. <laughs> Is that better? Oh. And this is another thing. I use this thing as a, I sit all the time when I shoot and do this. Well, that's what happens when you get old. You get tired and... Chin down. Let me come in. Well, I, I won't. We'll just get it as the test first okay. here. Yeah, now it's just harsh. Let's show your uh, getting up there. But the beard is nicely uh, lit. <laughs> But it's a very dramatic effect. So what we're also demonstrating is the idea that, that lighting basically shapes the scene, okay? So if you know that that's all that this, is light, that all this light is going to do, that's a good reference point to turn off your other lights and see what each build, build, build each your, one. Exactly, build each one. All right, um, do we want to do anything more with this setup or do we want to introduce a third Let's light? Let's bring the third light in. So I got to turn the Westcott one back on, what, I put it on M? M, yep. So that's good, that's on, and let's get a little bit of kick on the, the left-hand side of the face. Got it. So what are we going to do for that? We're going to bring in an umbrella. All right. Are you going to go grab that from I'm the room? I'm going to go grab it from the other room. All right, you grab that from the room, and uh, sounds good. What size umbrella are you bringing in? Um, well, that's an interesting question. You don't know the size, you just have it? I'm trying to think which size we could do, because if we did something like a 60, we would have a really kind of nice wash. I was looking for something like just a little bit of kick. I guess something as soft as can be to pop okay. in there. Then we're going to use a, a Westcott 26 inch, uh, and we're going to use a shoot through. Okay, so we've got that stand back there that we used the other time. Oh, and we have another pocket wizard. Yeah. And we're going to use another SB. Oh, I just realized. We're gonna add a couple more lights to this scene in just a minute. Oh, really? Yep. Okay, so we've got the 26 inch west Here cut, you go, back, shoot through. Back there. Um, and we're just gonna get this all set up really quick. Which stand is that? These are the Manfrotto's. These I love, because I take these when I go and shoot. I shoot in Manhattan a lot, and I go into very small spaces. I'm on the subway. These are very strong, very lightweight, and uh, they really do a great job. Yeah. You need to just, you, you need all different kinds of stands depending well, on where you're that's the thing, at. you need all kinds of bags, you need all kinds of stands, you need all kinds of lighting modifiers. But we'll also say you don't need to just go out and buy everything. It's still good to start with just one. Absolutely. You start with one thing and you build on that. You, you, you basically master the one that you have before you start adding other uh, accessories. Because you don't, we're not saying go out and buy everything. Exactly. Just use what you've got, start with that, and then go from there. Okay, this is going to be... This will be channel A, because I guess that's our third channel. Is that the max amount of channels you can use with yes, the Pocket Wizard? Yes, but you can use multiple lights in each channel. You can, you can do multiple, you can Got group it. these into each channel. So you're going to leave that open or closed? I'm or half open. The poor man's softbox, as Mr. Zach Arias likes to call it. <laughs> I love this thing. This, this, you know, this was, one of the, uh, this was one of my first you know, serious lighting tools. And, uh, and they're not that expensive. No. Nah. I think I paid 30 bucks for yeah, it. Yeah, the umbrellas are not yeah. bad at all. And the Westcott stuff's pretty nice. It holds up all right. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to put this over here, and I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to bring it up a little bit taller than you are and point it down just a touch. So that's not very tall then. <laughs> okay, so we are about, let's say, right about there. Yeah, I'm thinking just a little kick in this. Like a little bit of power. Okay. That's a well, lot of power, it seemed like. Let's see. So we're gonna just do that over here. And we'll just we'll just use that as a starting point. 
Okay, now, oh shoot, you know what I meant to do? What'd you mean to do? I took the Stofen off, and I'm gonna also zoom this guy out to 24, oh, I did it. Hey. How do you determine where you wanna zoom things? Do you just play it by ear and just do it? Well, in the case of this, I wanna zoom it out to its widest so that I get the most spread. Right. Uh, now, I could use the Stofen as well, but then, you know. You're I'm, limited I'm, at I'm 14 kind of limited. millimeters on that. Exactly, all right, so. We've got that set up. Oops, you hit the uh, depth of field preview button. Yep, oops. Okay, so let's see. That's group A, it's in M. Um, I'm gonna turn this thing way the heck down. Which one are you turning down? The A. Which one is A again? That's A. That's A, B is? B is this guy, and that's C. And this is why you have a lighting assistant when you do this stuff. Sure. <laughs> Well, the lighting assistants are great. Like you call Richie Myers up and you're like, Richie, let's get this, let's get the lights. Richie's a master at doing the lighting now, setups. Now, I'm just going to do a quick test. Everything's on. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. And let's see, I think I might just bring this one down, just bring B down just a little bit because I just want just a little bit of very kick. little bit of kick. So those are both on minus two. All right. So let us get into this right here. Okay. Very nice. And what do we have? You know what we should actually do? We should do a before and after. Well, we got a little bit much going on. I like that, Adam. Yeah, that's nice. That is a be that's beautiful. You got a, oh wow, look at the three catch lights on in that eye right there. Yeah, it's pretty special. That is a soft light all the way through. That's, that's beautiful. That is a beautiful we thing. We started with one light, we added a second, we've added the third. Well, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn that light off. Which one? C. Do you A, know what? Sorry. Turn, turn these two off. Let's start with one. Turn on the next one. Turn on the next one. Beautiful. We'll do so each A of the goes three. off. A and B are off. I'm and I'm going to stay in the same position. Right. Okay. Beautiful. Here we go. All right, I'm going to take the same framing as best as I can. Okay. So that was just A. I'm going to add B. Great, now I'm gonna add C. Oh, did I have C on? No, I think you... Oh no, A, sorry. I'm getting my lettering all screwed up. You said this one was B. <laughs> yep, here we go. Now this is with all three, but I'm not crazy about where we at with three, so I'm gonna take this one down. So here we go. This was... Wow. Okay, that's just the Westcott. The Apollo, the, the JS, Apollo. the big one. That's with the kick. Underneath. Underneath. And that's with the umbrella. That's too much for me. It's too much for you, but I, I mean, I, I do. That's a good shot for a woman. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, I'm saying if you were but, shooting but a let's, woman. Let's, but, but watch what happens here. I'm going to turn B and C off, and we're just going to use that. And you'll see that that's just going to overpower the scene. Okay? Did all the others go, or just that one? Just that one. Watch what happens. That is a, it's a very generic in type of lighting. So now what I want to do is Dude, I want to bring my- Let me explain my... that. Can I explain that real quick? Yes. I'm well, going to explain the, the, uh, the generic in type of, that's something that I would just do with one light and be like, oh, it's good enough. Right. You know, and not start to add the other lights. That's been my thing since like college is you get it. You're like, okay, one light looks fine because sure. you don't want to go through the process of adding the third, you know, second and third light, but that's not good enough. That's, no. that's fine. That's basic. That's a very, like... That's workable. It's, it's workable, it's one dimensional. But the thing I do like about it is we've got the, you know, somewhat of Rembrandt lighting. Um, it's, just, it's just, the balance to me is off. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm just gonna dial it down even further. Okay, we're all, whoop. I'm gonna go down here, a couple stops. Let's see what we got. That's with all three. You know, and we've, we've added a lot of light to this scene. That's nice. That's is not that bad. all three again? Yep. So what happened here? This is the, the JS Apollo. Where did you have that dialed down to? Um, actually, I have that off. Sorry. That's what I thought. Let's get back into it. <laughs> yeah, it's easy it gets get... more complicated as you start tweaking. Exactly. Easy to get confused. Here we go. So this is all three lights. You know what you should probably set up in the future? The first light's A. I know. Just, just, all right. So now we've basically got to, uh, we got to dial everything down a little bit. 
Um, so A, I'm going to take down, because that's too much. Um, C, I'm going to take down. And B is fine with me right now. Let's go. Here we go. Nice. And what we got? That's not bad. I mean, it doesn't have the kind of edginess that we had before. No. And but now what's happened is that this light has overcome. I, you know, this is good. I mean, you don't want to stop with the, the one type of picture. When you're doing portraits of people, right. you want to give them multiple looks to go with. Sure. Multiple uh, clothes changes, multiple hairstyles, different, different lighting. We've done three different lighting setups at least yeah. here. I would probably take this light and I would move it. I would move it maybe over to here, sure. something like that, to see how that goes. Because I feel like it's overpowering. All right. That's one way of dropping the, the power of the light. Well, we're all the way at the bottom on here. And without changing a lot of camera settings, that's a little bit better. But now it's just too balanced. I, 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 you know. I know. But it's good for a balanced, simple lighting setup. Yep. There. All right. I'm just going to try to try something over here for a sec. Yeah, just, you know what? Just start tweaking and playing, and there then we'll go. wrap it up. All right. Just a quick check. That doesn't work. <laughs> What'd you try? I just tried to bump up the uh, shutter speed, but... Be sure don't to, not to delete any of these. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the, um, the high-speed sync is not, uh, it's not happening right now. I don't know why. Yeah, so I can go up to a 320th of a second. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of other options that I have right now. All right. I, do can, you change wanna... the, I can change the aperture. Well, I think we've done a, enough here with just a basic setup. Yeah. Do you want to um, wrap it up, move on, have a final discussion? Yeah. All right. I so... mean, what I can say is that what I, what I ended up with at this point is not like I'm not settled on it. Like, I loved what we got over here. Yeah. You know, this to me, I would, I would prefer to have had this been maybe a soft box, small soft box, a much more focused beam or, if a, strip, I had my, or a strip box. My Apollo, if I had my strip box here. Yeah. But what that does show folks is that, you know, one light, two light, three lights. All right, let's move this stuff out of the way, bring the funky sofa back into the mix. Okay. And wrap up our discussion. Cool. And then just say, Farewell. Farewell. Ta-ta. Let me move this bad boy. Just be careful. It's not on there too great. It's all right. I'll replace it with an SB28. Nice. No, what is that thing? Yeah, that's a 28 I have over there. Three, two, one. Lift with your legs. Right. That looks about right. Cool. Nice uh, fold of the legs at the same time. Yeah, a little synchronicity there. Uh, we should be synchronized leg folders in the next <laughs> Olympics. Yeah, we should do a flash mob of synchronized leg folding. Get everybody just to sit there and go, three, two, two one. one. Whoop, wrong <laughs> Oh, I can't go this way for some reason. I'm no? left-handed. Ah. So everything you know, sits on that side, so I got to go this way. <laughs> everything. <laughs> too much I'm sorry, what can I tell you? <laughs> So that was interesting. That's eye-opening to me, from, you know, coming from a person that I'm not scared of doing the light setups. It's a different style than what I'm used to doing. Yeah. But it's a style that I need. It's, it's something that I need to add to my personal repertoire, right. which I've been saying. I always say this. I've done the studio lights. I can do it. This is where a, an assistant really helps me in the studio because I can just direct get everything set up and be like, all right, now let's do this. Let's add this kicker. Let's do this. Let's take this down a little bit. And it becomes trial and error. hundred percent. And that's the thing, you know, and I was talking about this even yesterday, you know, with some of the, uh, the, the fro readers is that it's okay for you to build some trial and error time into a shoot. Most of the time there is that kind of time. And, that, and I don't mean that you're learning on the job, but that means that you go in with the definitive plan and you build your, set, your basic settings, you know, based on what you've tried out and done in the past, and then you add from there. Yeah. 
And it's okay, you're allowed to take a bunch of test shots, you know, I mean, it, it's highly unlikely that your very first shot of the camera is spot on. It happens. Yeah, your first one and then done. The other thing I would also suggest, and what I did and what I would tell anybody to do is start with one light. Learn how to use that light in a multitude of different ways. Learn how to use it with different modifiers, use with the bear, with the stofen, with, you know, all different kinds of scenarios and then add from there. You know, if you want to go out and you want to buy three lights and a whole bunch of modifiers and a bunch of pocket wizards and think that you're going to just get it right out of the gate, no. well, good luck. Well, because we know that the gear doesn't make you who you are. It can help yep. as you become more of a, you know, as it becomes a profession and what your job is, then you're going to have the modifiers. And you can build some of these things yourselves, sure. but you don't, sometimes it's not worth the time rather than spend the 50 bucks to just get the thing <laughs> and you try to, you know, you spend six hours making something. Right. If you want to do the project, go ahead and do it. But as you become you know, busy with a lot of the shoots, you want to have the right stuff in the bag. And you want to know your gear. I mean, look, I'm still learning. I'm always learning. I'm always discovering new things. You know, I looked at that shoot that Zach did of you where he blacked out the background and just had you all highlighted. And I was like, wow, I yeah. got to learn how to do that. And that's the other thing. It's like, look at other photography. Look at what people do. And if there's stuff that you see that people are doing that you like, then just, you know, Figure it out. I mean, Zach's pretty open about sharing what he does, and that's the same thing that we're doing here. Yeah. So I think that, you know, again, start with one light, keep it simple, simple modifier. I mean, wh how many different scenarios can you get from a shoot through an umbrella? You can get a lot. Exactly. You, I mean, you just move it, <laughs> you tilt it up, you tilt it down, you put it to the side, you put it behind, you can do all those different types of shots. Right, exactly. Uh, you can even you can even make the umbrella close it down oh, right. and do the poor man softbox oh, we because have tried it changes that. Ah, yeah, you know yeah, uh, that's what you were getting at yeah poor man softbox right exactly because it, it, it focuses the light differently it's Absolutely. more of like a it's cone more diffused. you have all the there's a million modifiers that can take your light to a different step sure. you can set up 16 different lights which Richie has done before right and it's just you just go to town with it. I mean, you just build around. You start with the one, you add that second one, you add that third one, you can add whatever you want after that, and you just keep going and making it happen. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, there we go. Nice job. All right, you too. Man. That was fun. Very fun. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. Jared Poland, froknosephoto.com. See ya. So there you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed that, that video. I mean, yes, it's a couple years old, but the information in it is still great. So I hope you took something out of it. We would love, I mean, I love doing shooting videos. I love when we just let the camera roll and just talk and let people know what we're doing. And you can see the results as they pop up on the screen. I would love to have them stay up longer and I'll see if I can find those images and then put them up on to the internet later. But if not, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, if you want to get a preview of the Fronos Photo Flash Guide, click up there on the screen at any time uh, and you know, check out the preview. It's there and I think it will help you guys figure out how to use a flash finally one flash, because if you can use one flash, you can add two, three, four, five, six, 27 at any point because you understand the basics and fundamentals of flash photography. Check that thing out. I know you'll love it. And now I can sign off. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.